Welcome everybody. I'm your host to Love, Lust, and Lies. I am Kim Kenyon. And today, on today's show, we're going to get cracking. Today's show is going to be a two-part series. So this two-part series is, um, and I I wanted to do this two-part series because I wanted to express, see, a lot of times men, what we do is we hold things inside. And we don't want to make ourselves vulnerable. So we don't tell you what we're truly feeling. And let's for a man to get to the point where he tells you what he's truly feeling, then that means that you have a special place in his heart. And so what I tell women is this, how you know that you, that you've gone, that you've connected to a man emotionally is when a man will tell you things that hurt him. When he will tell you things that are are deep in his core that he believes, things that that touch him emotionally, and it's and and sometimes with some guys it takes a long time to get there, a long place to get there. But that how you win. But when you get there, what you do with it, it really makes can make or break your relationship. So I wanted to do a two part series on. It's called All Right Ways to Lose a Man. Ways to lose man. You go out and get the man and then you lose him. Some of you don't have anybody yet, but I'm going to share, share this with you first so that you don't make these mistakes. Ways to use a man, comma, things that men hate. Things that men hate. And a lot of times, again, as I said before, they will not tell you what's going on inside. All it is is you like, yo, the dude is just pulling away. He's pulling away from me. I don't understand this. He's not, he's not talking as much. He's not calling as much. And there are things that are happening on the inside. And I want you guys to understand that. So I want to thank you guys for the show. So we're about to get cracking. All right, let's get cracking. So I wanted to do this because I had one of my clients. One of my clients called me and she said, listen, Ken, the guy that I have been dating, the guy that I've been dating, I don't understand it. But it seems like he's withdrawing his affection for me. Okay, it seems like he's drawing his affection for me. And I and I asked her. I said, "Well, tell me what is it that you're doing? What what's going on?" And she began to tell me some of the things that she was doing. And I said, "I want you to be honest with me because you know the the truth is, if he's withdrawing." He's doing that for a reason. And I often say this, and I've been saying this in all these lives. I said, a man, don't look at what a man says. Look at what he does, okay? Don't look at what he says. Now, you want to hear what he says, but you also want to look at what he does. Because what happens is, I always say, they're they're two sides of the same coin. Two sides of the same coin. And what that means is, if a man tells you, I don't want a relationship. I'm just trying to kick it. I'm not trying to be serious. I want you to believe him. Okay, but the other side of that coin, and I think where the conflict comes in with women a lot of times is he says, I don't want a relationship, but he's doing relationship stuff. He hid it like y'all in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Y'all going out like you in a relationship. He coming over like you in a relationship. He doing the things that you in a relationship, but he doesn't want the relationship commitment. Now, I get it. Sometimes that might seem like it's conflict. It's my conflict, but we'll get to that in another another time. And I'll tell you how to decipher what's what. Okay, how to decipher if he says this and he, then he does another thing, I'll tell you what to do. But today we're going to talk about how to lose a man when you get him. Once you got him, once once you got his attention, once you got him and you reeling him in, right? You're reeling him in. And for those of you who don't have a man, I'm going to tell you this so you don't make the mistakes. When you reel him in, don't do the dumb shit that a lot of ladies do. Okay, here we go. Two part series. And the first part, we're going to get cracking in this. All right. And I want to explain to you, you guys know I'm transparent, so I will use my own life as an example. I will use things in my life to expound upon what I'm talking about. So the first thing is this, and y'all know I always come prepared for my show. I do my homework. All right. So the first thing is, is nagging him. Y'all are nagging him. So, so let me explain what I mean about nagging. All right. So what, 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 here's the thing, y'all. Every time your man does something, some you've got to learn what fights are worth fighting. Every fight that you get into with your man, every discussion you get into does not need to lead to a fight. And here's the thing. 
some things you gotta let go. Okay, here's the thing: if the man is take, if, if the man is is bringing on the break, he love you with all his heart. He's doing all of these things, but yeah, okay, he don't put the toilet seat down. Okay, he doesn't take out the trash. And what happens is when the man constantly hears what he is not versus what he is, it creates a negative stigma in his mind. I'll repeat that. If a man starts to hear what he is not versus what he is, it creates a negative stigma in his mind. Because what happens, y'all, is this. How many times, and this is what I tell my clients, I said, focus on what he does, not what he doesn't do. Focus on what he does, not what he doesn't do. So, uh, you know, so I'm a personal development coach. I would say, if you want a man to do something, here's how you do it. Number one, you tell him how great he is. You tell him, uh, and let, let me break this down a little bit further. This is, this is going to be a seminar, an uh, uh, educational training, as you said, as, as, as you say. So what you want to do is you want to get a man to do something. Stop nagging him. Here's what you do. What you do is, number one, find something that he does that is good. Compliment him on something that he does that is good. It might be a small thing, y'all. It might be a very small thing. You say, hey, baby, I like the way you do such and such. So if it's small, the smaller it is, the better it is. I'll say that again. The smaller it is, the better it is. Because what the brain does is, the brain, when you compliment somebody on something small, the brain of the person that receives it makes it big. They make it big. That's the reason why if my wife gets her nails done, I compliment on her nails. I say, yeah, I like that. I like that color. And I love that design on the third nail. Because what I've done is I have complimented her on something small. And she's like, wow, she makes it big. Her mind makes it big. And so what y'all are doing is when, when the man hears the nagging, the nagging, the nagging, the small things you think they're small, they ultimately grow like a cancer. So here's what you do from now on. When you want something done, first thing you do is you compliment them on something small. Baby, here's what you do well. Here's what you do well. <clears throat> then you say, then you say, and don't say, but if you ever use the damn word, but everything you said before the word, but means nothing. So what you say is, honey, you cut the grass. Great. And here's what I like. Would you mind looking at the gutter for me? And then you, and then you, then you, for, uh, then you, after that, say something powerful. Like, you know what? You always make us feel safe at home. You always do the things that you want to do at home. Because what happens? Whenever something is sandwiched between, whenever there's a negative sandwich between two positive things, what happens is the person remembers what you say first and what you say last. But if everything you say is strictly nagging, if everything is nagging, 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 that's the thing he's going to remember. And ultimately, mm -hmm. no one, here's what, I, 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 there's a study. There is a study. Y'all y'all know I'm a personal development coach. I got to tell you this. There was a study that done that was done, and it says this, and the study rose like this. Whenever you use temporary insults toward a person, it may be temporary. And I talked about this men doing it to women. Temporary insults, temporary nagging, temporary mm -hmm. this. What it does is it lowers the person's self-esteem for a moment. But here's the problem with that. When you keep doing it, their self-esteem grow. Their self-esteem continues to lower. After a while, I don't want to be around the person who brings me down. You don't see it that way, but that's what's happening. Men hate that, and you wonder why he's pulling away. And next thing you know is he's with the side chick. And because the side chick, I told you this before, the side chick is the escape room, the escape zone. Because the side chick is a safe place where I don't get criticism, where I don't get talked about, where the side chick focuses, focuses on what I do right, not what I do wrong. Okay? Now, here's what I'm going to say. Part number two. Number two of things men hate, why you lose him. Number two, not being his partner. Not being his partner. Now, let me get this. Let me show you this right here. So when you got a man, when you got a man, what happens is men, you ever notice how men say things like this? Team Canyon, Team Johnson. Yeah, I'm on Team Mac. What they're saying is on a subconscious level is they say, I see us 
as a team. I see uh, us as one. I see us as working together. Now, what happens is when you're on a team, everybody has a role on that team. Everybody works in a synergistic way to make sure the team thrives. Everybody. Now, if a man sees you on a team and all of a sudden he doesn't see you as a partner, he sees you as against him. He sees you as, you know what? You're not supporting what he does. Every time he got to figure this shit out on his own, like the bills are due instead of you going back to nagging. Hey, the rent's due. He know the rent due. He know they about to cut off the shit. He knows it. And what you do is you drive that knife deeper in him. You drive that knife deeper in him. And what happens is he doesn't see you as a partner because the reason why you know a man sees you, a man's home is his sanctuary. When I come home, I don't want to argue with you. I don't want to, I'm facing the world. I'm fighting the world. I'm fighting Corona. I'm fighting the fools on the job. But yet when I come home, I need solace. I need you to embrace me in a way that says everything is going to be all right. Even if you don't know how to fix it. Because what a man wants to do is, even if you don't listen to me carefully, even if you don't know how to fix it, because most times he ain't really looking for you to fix it because that's my job to fix it. I know that. I know my job is to fix it. So what happens is I just need you to support me while I figure it out. If you have something to add to it, add to it. Show me how I can fix it. But the truth of the matter is if you keep badgering me, telling me this stuff, dude, nagging me, I don't see you as a partner, I see you as an adversary. And, it, and whenever I see you as an adversary, I'm not going to live in a house that has an adversary in it. You can pretty much understand that he's going to find the doorway out of there as soon as he sees you as an adversary. OK, and y'all, y'all, I'm, I'm being honest. I'm just telling you the straight up truth. All right. That's why I'm making this a two part series. So you don't make the same mistakes that other people are making. And then you wonder why he leaves. You wonder why. How did I end up here? Now he's fooling with the side chick and you're thinking to yourself and you look at her and she ain't as cute as you. She ain't as fine as you. But you wonder how I ended up here. I'm thinking to myself, what? And then you don't know. All of the things I'm telling you, the things I'm telling you now is how he ended up there. Number three. Oh, number three. Ah, number three. Oh, my goodness. Number three. Not caring about his passion. I'm going to tell y'all a personal story. I don't know if my wife listening to this or not. I don't really even care. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. So years ago, my wife and I, I was dating other women. I was dating while I was dating my wife. We, I always tell, she always talking about we went together, but I said we didn't go together. The truth of the matter is I was dating other women. Okay. Yes. I was dating. I was gathering data. And the truth is I was out there playing. I was a player. I thought I was a pimp. I'm out there doing whatever I was doing, which y'all know that was, that's another episode. I talk about why I did that was some insecurity, some other stuff, why men cheat and all of that. But we weren't serious in my eyes. So, when I got to a point and I started really caring about her and I said, you know, I, I you know, I got to a point where I, I you know, like I, I, I often use the term. I say my, I often say that my passion, my purpose was bigger than pussy. And I'm just going to be honest with you. So I stopped doing all of that. So I was dating two, two females, this other female, I never mentioned her name. And I say this, and I decided that I was going to date my wife exclusively, exclusively. I didn't want nobody else. I wouldn't hit nobody else. And the other female got upset and I went to her honestly. And I said, I'm going to date her exclusively. I don't know what the hell I was thinking, but I did. And then I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to date her exclusively and I don't want to hurt you, which, you know, there's no easy way to break glass, y'all. Ain't no easy way, but I did it, but I told the truth. And then she said, why did you choose her over me? What does she have that I don't? And I thought about it. I said this. I said, honestly, it's not what you don't have. It's what she does have. And she was like, what? What does that mean? I said, the truth is, she supports me through everything. I had y'all, I wanted to be, y'all, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I wanted to be a business owner back then. I graduated from college. I turned down grad school to be a business owner to live on my roommate's floor. 
And I was living on my roommate's floor. And I said, I had this dream to be this big businessman. And, 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 and she, y'all, I, I was a serial entrepreneur just like I am now. I haven't worked for anybody in 27 years. And part of the reason I haven't is because this woman supported me through it all. So I was living on somebody's floor. And I'll never forget, I told the other lady, I said, you know what? The fact that my dreams mean as much to her as they mean to me. And that was the reason why I decided that she was the one for me. She looked at me and was like, I mean, she, she was speechless. And so in number three, it says not caring about his passion. That's number three. Because what happened was, y'all, it, it doesn't mean that you have to get in there and do what he does. She just was interested in it. She never, don't ever dismiss a man's dreams. If you ever dismiss a man's dreams, what's going to happen is ultimately he will dismiss you. Ultimately, he will dismiss you. And so what y'all thinking is a stupid ass idea. And she, and y'all, I'm going to tell you an idea that I had. And she thought it was stupid. We, we just finished the book. We and her just finished this book together. And in the book, we talk about uh, an idea I had back then. And one of the ideas that I had back then was to put cigarette lighters in clubs. You know, back then, everybody was smoking cigarettes. Uh, and she told me now, she was like, that was a dumb idea. She said, that was dumb as hell. And I was like, for real? You made me believe. She said, what I did. And she said, I'm going to use your term. She said, I simply brought you to the threshold of your own understanding. God almighty. Woo! She said, I brought you to the threshold of your own understanding by asking you questions. I kept exploring the idea. And then I knew that as smart as you are, you would come to that. That, 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 that didn't work. But she never told me it wouldn't work. She said, I'm going to support you. I'm going to call. I even had locations, y'all. It just so happens I'm so happy that I didn't get the money to buy the vending machines. <laughs> but y'all, but, but not supporting his passions is huge. Huge. And you might say to yourself, well, I want him to support my passion. And I say, sure you do. And you should. But the truth is, the law of reciprocity simply says this. Give that what you desire first. When you give it first, the thing that you desire, that person will reciprocate it. They just have to believe what you're giving is earnest and honest. And, a, and, and they believe it. And so, so, so here's what happens. And I don't want to get too, um, too, too far in the weeds with this. But I'm going I'm to share this with you. You ever notice, here's how this works, y'all. This is powerful. You ever notice why when you go to the mall, when we were going to the mall, y'all, mm -hmm. you ever notice how mm -hmm. they give you the chicken like in the restaurant area? You say, hey, chicken, Chinese, you know, the Chinese restaurant, sesame chicken, you want some sesame chicken? Mm -hmm. So there's a study. There's a study that says, of the people that take the chicken, how many of, do you, how many of them do you feel, feel obligated to go get the chicken once you've given them something? Do you know they did the study and they said over 57% of the people who took the chicken said because they gave it to me, I felt I had to go buy something. Now, it don't, it's not everybody, but it's some people. And that's why I'm saying the law of reciprocity works. That what you give in earnest, that what you desire, give it first and the other person will reciprocate it as long as they believe that you have given it out of your heart. All right. Number four. Uh, number four, ways to lose a man, things that men hate. Number four, not being appreciated. Not being appreciated. Now listen, y'all. Here's what I mean by not being appreciated. You might appreciate something that he does. But if you never verbalize it, if you never say it, that's what I was talking about earlier. Find something that he does that's small. Compliment him on it. He will make it big. OK, because whenever you feel unappreciated, even as a woman, whenever you feel unappreciated, you know what happens to you? There is a seed that begins to grow in you because the number one need, the number one need of every single person is the need for significance. Notice what I just said. The number one need of every person is the need for significance. People get it in many different ways. Everyone needs that. Some people, when they don't get it, you know what they do? They go up and shoot up a school and kill 20 kids. But they feel like, I got to get significance. Now my name will be in lights. And so what I'm telling you is, the very thing that they need, give it to them. This means this. Number four, 
give them significance because when they feel not appreciated, but it's because you as a team member, you as the person that's a part of my team, I've given my heart to, you don't give me significance. That's the reason why I tell you what, I'm going to tell my wife, you're beautiful. I don't give a damn. I ain't let no other man tell her that. She will never lack. She will never lack something that another man can't give. If she go out and do it, it'll be, it'll be because she went out and did it on her own. I'm going to give her the things that I wanted. I'm going to give her significance. And when you got a man, and so y'all, we get, so what we get is we get so familiar with people. We get used to people. And when you get used to people, what you do is you stop doing the things that you used to do. We're going to talk about that one tomorrow. That's going to be number six tomorrow. But the law of significance is so powerful. How, why is it that if, when you give a man significance, like if you're married to him, if my wife tells me how wonderful I am or whatever, and I believe it's genuine, I'll go do, I'll jump out a window for her because that significance is everything, something every person, every human being needs. Don't ever believe that, y'all. And when you don't give a person significance, if they're a part of your team, what happens is they're going to get it somewhere else. And that's the honest truth. And the last thing, number five for today, part two coming up tomorrow. So you got to join in. Last thing. Oh, man. Number five, what thing men hate, things men hate, ways to lose a man, things men hate. Down talking to him, down talking to him and down talking about him to others. Down talking to him and a down talking about him to others. Let me tell you something. If you want to lose a dude, first thing you got to do, first thing, here's the problem. You out there telling everybody on Facebook your problems. You out there telling everybody on Facebook what happened. Now you're going to tell him, mama and them, yeah, he didn't do such and such. And he didn't do this. Or he did this. And then when y'all get back together, they looking at him sideways. Okay? And so what happens is when you begin telling other people what you don't realize that you've done, you have planted multiple seeds that are going to grow into something. The problem is, is that you don't know what the seeds are going to grow into, okay? You don't know what the seeds are going to grow into. So when you start down talking to him, let's start with that one, number one. Start down talking to him. You ain't this. You ain't that. You is. And such and such better than this, playing the comparison game. Such and such this. You need to make more money. You ain't doing this. And you're down talking to him. So what happens is, you don't know this, but what you're doing is, Every time you do that, you chip a little bit off his self-esteem. Just a little bit. Pop, pop. Pop, pop. Just a little bit off his self-esteem. And so when you take a little bit off his self-esteem, just a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and what you've done, essentially, you have essentially planted a seed all over. Everywhere else, you've planted a seed that grows into resentment. Resentment of you and resentment of themselves because they stayed with your ass. And so I'm telling people, stop talking down to him. If there's something you want to do, talk up, okay? Elevate the conversation of what we can do together. Elevate the conversation of how I can help you because I'm your team member. Elevate the conversation because I can support you. You build him up and thus you get a higher calling, higher focus of people focusing on things that mean something bigger than themselves. And then you stop telling everybody about your stuff. Stop telling. Because the only reason you tell it, folks, is because you want to feel better about yourself. Instead of seeking out counseling, coaching, therapists, coaches like me, counts, coaches like Milani Shani who helps you with healing. Because there's a part of you that is hurt and broken anytime you got to look outside of yourself to get healed. That's what you're looking at. You're looking for affirmation. And you got to stop doing that, y'all. You got to stop doing it. Those are the five for the day. I'm going to give you something else. Y'all, I just want to say that y'all know I'm passionate about this. I started doing this three weeks ago and people seem to like it and I want to expand with it. And I just, I just, mm -hmm. I have in my heart, I just want people to understand that the truth of the matter is, is you control your own life. Stop looking outside 
to gather. You control your own destiny. Take 100% control of your life. Today I was working out. I was working out. My man, my man Mike Fields said something powerful, and I agree. He said, listen, 85% of self-talk is negative. But let me take it a step further. 85% of self-talk to yourself and to others is negative. So you got to understand when this 85% of your self-talk is negative, what's happening is you're conditioning yourself to lose. You're conditioning yourself to negativity. You're conditioning yourself to a life less than what you deserve. You're conditioning yourself to be devalued at every turn. You're conditioning yourself not to get the person you desire. Because you ain't going to ever get the man you desire if you're your old woman you desire. Because you know what? Your vibration is too low. We're gonna, I'm going to teach you about vibration later on. But right now, you got to be willing. Be willing to change. You got to be willing to change. So the word of the day is simply this. Is, are you a rubber band? Or not? Are you a rubber band man or are you a rubber band woman? And what I mean by that is simply this. The other day, I was just, I was playing around in the house because, you know, you do crazy stuff when you're stuck in the house, right? So I had a rubber band because when I was young, we used to shoot rubber bands across the room. You know, stuff kids do, you shoot them across the room. And so, so what you do is, so the other day I shot the rubber band, just, I'm just here by myself, entertaining myself. And I shot the rubber band. And I pulled it back and it went way in the other room. But then I pulled it a little bit and it went way right there. It didn't go that far. And I thought to myself, I said, this is like life. The more you are stretched to change, to heal, to grow, the further you're going to grow and go in life. See, when you pull the rubber band all the way back and let it go, it goes way in there. Because it's been stretched to grow. You've been stretched to grow. If you are unwilling to be stretched. And a lot of you say, who the hell is he telling me all this? I don't care. I don't care. I've sold a half a million books. I've, I've written nine books. I don't care. I've been on TNN, QVC. I've done a lot of shit. It don't matter what you think about me. What matters is what you think about yourself. Because if you don't think about self, if you're not willing to change yourself, Look at yourself today, and that's where you'll be tomorrow. That's your word of the day. All right, homework. What I want you to do is write down all of the things out of group five, the first five, part one, that you've done. And then how can you change next time? All right? All right, y'all. I am Ken Canyon. I am the host of Love, Lust, and Lies, and I'm out.